Hey everybody, this is Steve with Real Progressives. I am trying to take my stream from last night where I um, erupted into uh, you know, gloating and basically accepting the fact that uh, you know, we've been duped. You knew it was, but now you got the proof, right? But let me tell you why I'm so adamantly opposed to the entire Clinton machine and why I'm so adamantly opposed to going along to get along. As a former Republican, as someone who grew up in a Reagan household, as someone who lived and died by supply-side economics, as someone who lived and died by the idea that hard work would get me where the hell I needed to be, I realized when my world fell apart, frickin' two master's degrees, folks, I was already three semesters into a PhD. We're not talking about like, you know, just putzing along here. I mean, I was really, really, really working around the clock. Kind of like I do with Real Progressives, except I was doing it toward grad school and toward the doctorate. And I still couldn't dig out. I still couldn't dig out. I still got arrears on child support. I still have arrears on my taxes. I still have issues with my own mortgage. I still have issues across the board. So here I am, friggin' a shining example of hard work, and I couldn't survive. I couldn't make it work. Now you've got Clinton, who is absolutely co opting every single thing the Reagan revolution spoke of. And these leaks proved it in spades, folks. In spades. I didn't leave the Republican Party to get back into the Republican Party under a different name. I left because it was completely and utterly ineffective. It did not represent regular people. If you stub your toe, you're out of the rat race. The Republicans are going to talk to you about bad choices. Well, not the new Republicans. The new Republicans don't even know what the hell they are. But the Democrats, they have adopted the entire Calvinistic line of hard work and well if you didn't do that you know you know if you just made better choices all the same exact crap and those leaks proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that that is their entire ethos the idea of supporting Democrats because they're not Republicans is something I can't sign on for and I feel compelled to tell you all, who maybe have always been a lefty, maybe you've always been on the left side, maybe you've always been a radical, maybe you've always wanted to overthrow the system, maybe you've never ever been a conservative a day in your life, and you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I want to tell you seriously, I've been here before. This is like somebody who flees a communist country where it's a totalitarian regime and they crack down and they're putting people in uh, you know, jails and stuff for speaking out and they leave the country to come to the great USA only to find it's the same place. That's what I'm talking about when I say the Democratic Party has become the Republican Party. This is not something that you all don't know, but some of you guys just pay lip service to that. You say it but you don't really understand the full ramifications of it. The entire supply-side economics with some lipstick here and there is what Hillary Clinton is selling to you. This is not some sort of a, a great bipartisan party where they're, where they're trying to build inroads across the aisle to, to make progress for America. No. They are the exact same thing. Like, I used to hate the people that always talked about both sides. Because both sides are not the same, right? They're not. Even still, they're not. But it's not a substantive difference. The same economic policies that cause a Donald Trump to come to power, that cause people to support something like that, are still being peddled by Hillary. And the same people who adamantly still talk around the clock about how much they hate the GOP and how much they hate trickle-down economics and how much they hate that entire, the free market, the hand of the free market. You see in spades 
that Hillary is that free marketeer. You see in spades that she is a puppet of Wall Street. She's not even a puppet. See, to say she's a puppet means that she's like just some airhead. No, she is complicit. She is a member of the Wall Street elite. She flat out said in her, you know, hacked emails through Podesta that, you know, bottom line is, yeah, I'm a little disconnected. I, I, I have no idea basically what those people are going through. And she's right. She doesn't. She lives in a completely separate economy that's different from ours. Our economy is so different. We are all living even when we make six figures, you, any of y'all old enough to remember what it was like to make six figures when your parents would talk about making six figures? That was kind of like the bogey for you had made it. You know, you knew that you'd made it if you were making six figures. And there's still a lot of people out there that confuse six figures as having made it. But I can tell you in many of the major metropolitan areas, six figures is almost a poverty wage. How scary is that? And it's because the way the Democratic Party has bamboozled working America and the way the Democratic Party has bamboozled the regular academia and the media into believing that they are fighting for us. You know, Kevin Drum, who's an establishment hack, wrote an article a while back saying the Democratic Party hasn't done anything for the middle class in 40 years. Now, he probably walked that back now because he's all lapping up the Hillary talk. But the fact is they haven't. Even the ACA, which so many of us fought tooth and nail for, we, we sat there and we said, hey, it is awesome that they're getting rid of pre-existing conditions. That's pretty awesome. And it's awesome that you can port insurance from here to there so that if you do lose a job, that you maintain your insurance. So there is that, that is a improvement. But it wasn't an improvement in the sense that what they did was they threw some token things at us. They jacked the price up. They made it inaccessible. Now, in order to go to the doctor, you're still paying. Like, for example, to get a basic antibiotic, I had to pay $25. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but I also had to pay a $50 copay to the doctor to get that prescription. And then I had to pay another $150 for chest x-rays. So just to get a little bit sick, to get some medicine, oh, and $25 for the, the, the prescription cough medicine. So we're talking about, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks for getting a little bit of a sickness. And I have health insurance. So they have done nothing for us, literally nothing for us. But they've got people screaming at the top of their lungs that they are for the working man. This is the biggest part of the lie that infuriates me and what motivates me even right now. I was planning on taking a nap. If you see my Facebook wall, those of you who are my friends, I said, Steve's taking a Saturday siesta because I am drained. This entire thing had me up late last night going through these emails, had me up talking to people on my team. You know, everybody is up in arms. Now, this whole entire process has been exhausting. Now, I don't know about you all, y'all probably have your own routines, but for me, I'm 24 by 7 with this. And when I fit something in my phone, never leaves my hand. Even when I take a nap, as ridiculous as it sounds, my phone is in my hand. When I go to the bathroom, the phone is in my hand. And I'm studying, I'm trying to figure this stuff out. Because I'm serious about this. What I'm doing to you all through these live streams is taking my thoughts and projecting them outward. Thank God some of you guys agree with me. But the fact is, is that if you haven't been a Republican before, if you didn't understand what it was like to be under the guise of Rush Limbaugh and celebrating Ollie North and to not hate Kenneth Starr and to uh, be amongst the right wing, if you didn't know what it meant to see them as your friend, to like Dick Cheney, to like George W. Bush, to revere Ronald Reagan, to have cried when he died, if you don't know what that's about, then it's really, really hard for you to realize exactly how horrible what Clinton is doing is. Because when you leave that, you have to deprogram all those likes once you start realizing the terror and destruction that came economically from the Reagan revolution and the Clinton revolution, because the Clintons carried on Reaganism in a way that you couldn't believe on sp in spades because they got people, regular people like you, to believe they were on your side. They feel your pain, build a bridge to a new tomorrow. 
It's a well thought out crime bill. You know, we've got to kick those old ladies and those young single moms off of welfare after five years because they've got to have some personal responsibility. Damn it, that's Calvinism. That's GOP logic. And it's getting that way more and more and more to the point now where the Democratic Party has completely co-opted the Reagan revolution. And the Republicans, they're spinning out of control. They're all over the place. So if you guys haven't been a Republican before, take it from a former Republican. The Democratic Party is the party of Reagan now. And I didn't sign up for that. That's why I'm going green. That's why I'm supporting Jill Stein. That's why I'm fighting for independence to rally together, to pull together the largest voting bloc ever. I'm not interested in being in a party that is so completely against us. It's, it's not even kind of for us. It is completely, completely against us. Do not allow Donald Trump's rhetoric to scare you. Do not allow Hillary's rhetoric to make you believe she's for you. Do not allow the media to spin this in any way other than the fact. This is 100% GOP. This is supply side. This is the one party system. You are experiencing a convergence of the former Reaganites and the new Reaganites. And the new Reaganites have a D in front of their name. Don't be fooled, folks. If you ever thought you hated supply-side economics, if you ever once complained about Ronald Reagan, like literally, if you ever complained about Ronald Reagan one time, don't you dare tell me you have to support Hillary Clinton. Don't you dare say that. Because I'll call your shit out on you. That's right. I'm on a hunt now. I'm going to make sure people know flat out. If you understand what it is you hated about Reagan, you've got it on steroids with Clinton. On steroids. And I'm telling you right now, as a former Reagan guy, it's very, very hard to criticize those who you once loved. And breaking free from that prison that allegiance, that false allegiance, that whole make America great again, the red, white, and blue flags everywhere, you know, the perfect statesman with the hand on the heart, you know, there was a lot of symmetry, there was a lot of precision, there was a lot of beauty and majesty, there was a lot of things to wrap you up in Laney Riefenstahl propaganda. I mean, you almost see him goose stepping. That's what we're seeing, and all around the world, there is so much stuff going on. There is war brewing. <clears throat> and it's manufactured, folks. This is like fracking and suddenly you have earthquakes and saying, oops, I guess there's something going on with the earth. No, we have sent the CIA all over this planet, destabilizing governments, causing coups, causing all kinds of destruction, all in the name of furthering Western values. What's really happening is we've got economic hitmen all over the country, all over the world, sabotaging sovereign nations, sabotaging peace. And that is what Clinton is leading. There's nothing about her that is in any way, shape, or form a lesser evil. She is the most frightening thing I've ever seen in my life. Because not only does she say bad things, I mean, the idea that she would have one policy behind the scenes and one policy for you and me, the idiots, should tell you an awful lot. And for those people out there who sit there and peddle her stuff, she's told you point blank. The things you're sitting there telling people are her external policy. It's a lie because she's got another one internal, which is the GOP one. And it's not the GOP of today. It's the Reagan revolution in the Democratic Party. The Reagan revolution hasn't died. It's just changed parties. We've got the boll weevils back again, folks. Do you remember what the boll weevils are? If not, look it up. B-O-L-L-W-E-E-V-I-L-S. Boll weevils. Southern Democrats, the conservatives, the Dixiecrats. They're back. 
It's almost like poltergeist, you know. We're back. Folks, we've got to fight this with our, every ounce of our being. Unless you want to see the wealth gap grow immeasurably. It already grew insanely under Obama. You know, hope and change, Obama. The wealth gap grew like this, exponentially. He made Reagan look like the most liberal president we've had in a long, long time. I'm just telling you, you don't have to like what I'm saying. Facts are facts. And Clinton is way more hawkish than Obama. Clinton is way more deceptive than Obama. And more importantly, Clinton is part of the good old boy network. Clinton is sitting at the table with these people. This is her peeps. She's new money in an old money environment. And she's not giving up her place lightly. We got to take from her. Because our lives matter, right? Our world matters. Our country matters. Our kids' lives matter. We shouldn't have to struggle so that she can exact her supply side plan her war hawking plan. Trust me, I swear on this. If you don't believe anything else I say, if you write me off as crazy on other things, that's fine. But on this one thing, trust me, I am a former Republican and I know what I'm talking about. You're witnessing the rebirth of the Reagan revolution. And if you don't stop it, we're toast. This is Steve with Real Progressives, hoping you have a wonderful day.